Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of our NASCAR Heat 5 career mode. I hope you're all having a great day today. We're at the worst mile and a half on earth. It's Texas Motor Speedway. As you see the playoff grid coming into today's episode, Shane Van Gisbergen, the last driver in by 10 points over Bubba Wallace with 11 races left until the playoffs after Martinsville Larson, 16 points ahead in the regular season championship battle as he continues to light up the world of the Cup Series here as we head into the summer stretch of races. We had huge news this weekend in Texas Motor Speedway. Ryan Blaney makes it official. He is leaving Team Penske following this season. A bit of a surprise considering he is well inside the top 10 in the regular season standings. A win locked in the playoffs. Things are going well. Really the only driver that's having a good season at Penske. He's the only one in the playoffs right now. But he is officially leaving Penske Racing at the end of the season. Does Blaney maybe see something? that we don't see currently on the inside looking out at Penske Racing. That's maybe the big question there as two-thirds of that team is having a very difficult year. We do know Joey Logano is already retiring at the end of the season. Penske is going to have to fill up two seats, but we have to wait and see. Does Ryan Bellini leaving Penske maybe throw a bit of a wrench into the plans of Joey Logano's retirement. I think we're going to have answers onto that one uh, probably before the playoffs, I would say. So stay tuned on that. That's still 10 races away. Playoffs are a ways away yet here. We focus in on our own uh, situation. I mean, we're qualifying here looking for a 29.888 or better. We do better. We get a 29.760. That puts us down in P19 even after beating the goal so a bit of a rough effort here Texas has never been a very kind track to us so I expect nothing more today is Harrison Burton one of the part-time drivers in the field 22nd on the grid as uh, Kyle Larson on pole alongside the 48 rookie of the year contender Rajan Carruth who continues to struggle my teammate Chandler Smith and Christopher Bell up in the top five all of my teammates uh, Ty Gibbs as well in the top 10 actually as we have a lot of work to do coming into this race Joe Gibbs has a fifth entry this weekend. Taylor Gray in the 81 starts P36. Xfinity Series was also racing in Texas, and it was Ryan Truex picking up his first win of the season, putting himself in the Xfinity Series playoffs. Taylor Gray, speaking of him, P5 in the race as you see some other finishing positions. Uh, Daniel Suarez, uh, a bit of a rough day for him down in 23rd. Andres Perez in P18, one of the Andretti rookies that we continue to keep an eye on. Uh, when it comes to the playoff situation, uh, currently it's still Brad Perez at the top over Taylor Gray, uh, but right now the last two drivers in, Ryan Vargas and Andres Perez, actually tied for the last spot with Haley Deegan uh, in the 60 car for RFK as we look forward into some Sunday action here from Texas Motor Speedway. Let's get ready to roll. We're back in Texas for some speedway racing. Kyle Larson is set to lead the field to green in an all Hendrick front row. A rookie on the front row too with Carruth. I expect to see these young drivers um, start to find improvement. Right boys, uh, obviously a track that's never treated me very well, but uh, we'll just stay with it all day and you never know what's going to happen at a place like this. Yep, just keep your head in the game here. Let's go get some points of the five car. So we're ready to go racing. Carruth looking quick in the 48. Ryan Priest to the back after failing optical scanning station. There's Kyle Larson who's won two of the last three races. Could have gone three for three if it wasn't for the tire failure in Darlington. We're ready to go racing from 19th position behind the two of Todd Gilliland. The green flag is out. We're racing. It's a Hendrick Motorsports front row lockout. Larson Carruth, my teammate of Chandler Smith in P3 just behind as we head down into turn number one. This is a lengthy race here as we got Corey Heim just behind there. We're up the inside of the 88 maybe future teammate of Noah Gregson. Of course Dale Jr. is really wanting us to drive for Junior Motorsports next season. He has put some offers on the table. He's given us an offer to be in the Indy 500 as well. There's maybe one more request I want to make and that's kind of on who my crew chief might be for next season. Of course, we still have a meeting set up with Brad Kozlowski for next episode, but after that, we still have uh, Joe Gibbs Racing has to come out and make an offer and as well we still need an update on what our situation is with sponsorship because if we can't find sponsorship for this team, well then it's not even going to be an option to stay at Joe Gibbs Racing. Now as I use up that 31 of Alex Bowman there for Richard Childress Racing a little bit on the exit of turn two. It's been an up and down season for the RCR driver. Bowman has failed to secure, you know, a long-term future in this sport here in the Cup Series of this career mode. Now he's been floating around different teams from Hendrick Motorsports to Colleague Racing, now to Richard Childress Racing. Is that going to be his long-term future? We expect to see RCR improve as this season goes on under the new leadership of 
have Austin Dillon, freshly retired, of course, from full-time racing, and Kevin Harvick, who has come over to help uh, lead that team into the future as well. As we're up to P14 early on here, coming to lap four, but unfortunately, Busher now at my inside, bringing his RFK teammate of Chase Briscoe up the inside as well. They're both going to pass us now. Busher, the only winless driver on that Roush Fenway Kozlowski team so far this year. Early in this race, though, as we slide on the exit of turn four, Rajah Karuth out in front in that number 48 is actually right to the back of the 17, fast and all Ford Mustang who jumps up to that outside line. Here comes Corey Heim for 23-11, joining the mix. Both of their, his teammates, I should say, uh, is very much in the playoff battle. Meanwhile, Heim has gotten some work to do in his second full-time season of Cup Series competition. It takes a while for these new drivers to kind of find a comfort in the Cup Series nowadays, so it's not surprising to see him as far off of his teammates as he is, but we are starting, starting to see uh, some genuine, I think, progress made now by Corey Heim in these recent races. Another solid driver, Front Row Motorsports 38, Zane Smith. He's been hovering around 20th in the standings this season. Been a very solid season for him. He slips through up the inside. He takes P16 and he is marching his way forward. He would pass Heim. He would pass Briscoe as well. Into 14th goes Zane Smith now as Carruth continues to lead the way as Byron and Larson though are right up there with them now is actually as we come to lap 11 it seems like the pace is starting to come to this interstate batteries number 19 and now we'll go up the inside of one of our alliance teammates of Heim we'll pass him on the inside we'll take p16 back and try to march our way forward here now and in a lap later 25 to go in stage one we'll go up the inside of the 98 of Briscoe and we should be able to pass him as well it's going to be side by side he's not going to make it easy through one and two we'll have to try and get him on the run into turn three instead we cannot make it on field uh, of course here in stage at number one uh, so we will have to make a pit stop by uh, under green or under caution here before the stage is over lap 15 at this point in the stage we're not far away uh, from pit stops occurring here I got about seven laps of field at this point we're running down Christopher Bell, uh, Christopher Bell who qualified top five down to P14. So he is struggling early on in this race as well uh, as we are reeling him in. And it's just going to be a matter of time until we pass him. 20 to go on the stage and we're right up to the bank bumper of that DeWalt Toyota Camry. Now love that race car now uh, as we reel him in through the center of the corner out of turn two. We should have the run that we need to make the move up the inside. And here we go down towards turn three side by side. 20 car on our right we'll clear him hopefully right here yes we do with ease that 20 is definitely struggling to the 14th position now the battle up front starting to heat up William Byron to the lead Larson's joined the battle as well I could confirm at this point so it's a three car battle for the front and it's all Hendrick Motorsports Byron Carruth and Larson the 48 having a career day so far now as pit stops are about to kick off Byron actually is pitting from the lead right here uh, so now as we exit turn four we'll pass in we'll pass Kyle Bush who pits for track house in that uh, 99 Honda uh, Civic now as we're going to be boxing this lap end of lap 20 cars in front of us coming in we down to third we slide we overcorrect we go up back across the track into the outside wall a huge mistake a costly one no caution we stay green i just completely lost it on the transition onto the apron there that's all on me we do pick up a bit of damage, so that's going to put us in the pits for about an extra second. I'm not really making any adjustments. I was happy with how the car was driving up until that point. Uh, so four tires, uh, and we'll head back onto the track. So yeah, it takes us about an extra second just to get the car fixed up. I mean, that could have been way worse. Uh, fortunately, things stay green, and, and we are able to not suffer really much consequence. We do lose a few spots. There goes Briscoe, who pitted the lap earlier. Uh, he'll breeze by. Bubba Wallace in front of us. Uh, Christopher Bellbank in front of us as well. Uh, so yeah, so work to do in the course of about 15 laps until stage one comes to an end here now byron would take the lead he pitted first of the leaders he assumes the lead from the lead where he originally pitted now uh, as we are approaching the final 10 laps a nice green flag start to stage number one you don't get this very often uh, in this game so this is a nice change of scenery here uh, as we continue on I'm just trying to reel these guys in coming to 10 to go on the stage christopher bell is continuing to go backwards meanwhile bubble wallace one of the bubble drivers trying to make a pass on him and he would get past him and move himself up into p16 bell down to p17 you don't usually see him struggle like this when it comes to a mile and a half his bread and butter of course now uh, it's like seeing a larson struggle at a track like this you just don't expect that to happen and we would reel him in as we come towards lap 32 we're all over the bank 
of the Stewalt Toyota Camry here now as Joe Gibbs Racing not having great race pace. Our teammate of Chandler Smith as well has faded. Ty Gibbs is running okay though up towards the top 10 now as we're going to look to the inside of this 20 and try to pass him into turn 3. Crash! Then uh, Nick Sanchez into the outside wall with a blown tire. Caution flies for Andretti Global as we just got our nose in front of Bell when that caution flew. Heim, Bubba Wallace 15th, 16th and winning the stage uh, was the 24 of William Byron. It's a Hendrick Motorsports 1, 2, 3, 4, Larson, Elliott, Carruth to follow over Reddick, Bush, Kozlowski, Gibbs, Logano and Ryan Blaney in the top 10. Logano again finding some pace as we are going to only add grill tape on the pit stop because I was quite happy with the long run pace that we have. Noah Gregson out of the race with a mechanical failure as well. That something we missed during stage one. We gain one spot up to P16 for the restart. It's been in a really interesting first stage. We gave up track position after that mistake, but we get back underway for the start of stage two. You see the 18 car, Chandler Smith. As I mentioned, he's been drifting backwards as well. Uh, it's been a rough second season for him in his full-time career here in the Cup Series now. He is uh, pretty well entering territory of having to win to get into the playoffs here, uh, which is never a, a position you want to be in when you're driving a Joe Gibbs number 18. Now, as we head down this back straightaway, uh, Busher looking up my inside. Byron leads the way. The 98 goes way up the road here now, but he's going to stay ahead. I struggle really hard here on the short run at Texas, so it's all about survival in the first basically 10 laps of a run, no matter what. I'm just trying to hang on to the best I can because I know I'm not going to go forward without some kind of significant advantage and actually clip the apron slide up the track nearly into the door of the 17 leaning on him on the quarter panel a little bit there but we maintain p18 carson hosevar just behind us there for junior motorsports that team has had ups and downs all season dale jr assures us they are strengthening their relationship with hendrick motorsports going into next season and they are pretty well certain that they are going to be a team that will be winning races next season. That was another thing of why they want me to over there is because they know they're going to be winning races next season. And I believe them. I do believe Dale Jr. when he says that. So we definitely have to significantly consider them. They seem to be making the biggest push. We've only had one real conversation with Joe Gibbs uh, about our future here at this team. And we've had one real conversation or two with Brad Kozlowski, but we know more are coming on both of those teams. So we'll have to just kind of be patient. We're not even halfway through the season yet although we are getting a little bit close now uh, as we continue to watch this battle in front of us. Briscoe up the inside of the 17. He'll pass his teammate. These two have been running really close to one another. I'm trying to pass the 17, but I'm sliding around. Chase Elliott out in front. One win on the season for him, trying to make it two today. But Byron, he will assume the lead in that number 24 as we continue on, coming to lap nine of the stage. Byron looking for his first win of the season. Kozlowski crashes into the outside wall. Contact there. Caution's going to fly in our A is going to sideswipe the six so we have to hope that our car will take off on the restart because it could be 50 50 chances on that one nobody's gonna pit so we're just gonna rack them back up and get ready to go racing here we cannot make it to the end of the stage uh, as Kozlowski's race is not over that six car was looking quite fast and look at that our car actually takes off so we'll take it we could not make it to the end of the stage if we pitted when we did we'd be about five laps short six laps short or so so we get back racing here Kozlowski's gonna try and work his way back forward and that uh, Kings Hawaiian Right orange. Ford Mustang now as we're right up on the back of his teammates and three wide actually with the 98 of Briscoe now down this bank straight away. Corey Heim on the outside as we dive into turn three. We got two of those RFK Fords right there. We slide up a little bit here nearly into the side of the 11. Chastain just in front of us as we clip the apron on the exit four. We slide. We overcorrect. We clean out the number 11 of Corey Heim. Caution flies and we keep it straight. Please apologize to Corey. This car sucks so bad guys on the short run. I don't know what's going on. Okay, bring it to us here. We're going to pit. A huge mistake is Reddick Smith, Bubba Wallace, Shane Van Gisberg, and myself. Uh, we all come into the pits and everybody else stays out. We still cannot make it to the end, however. We're going to be about uh, two laps short, and I don't think we're going to save that. So we'll wait and see what happens, but it's already chaos now. Heim in the 11 slow after that big crash there. That was all my fault. I clipped the apron on the exit of turn four. Uh, slid to the left side of the track, overcorrected, shot back into the 11, cleaned him out. Fortunately for me, the 11 basically saved the big blow I was going to take into the outside wall. Of course, at the expense of it absolutely destroyed his car. 
fortunately he's still in the race and has a chance to finish well uh, as we continue on our way, way forward here and how about the battle for the lead I saw the 22 on the track map take the lead briefly over William Byron and the 24 Joey Logano retiring likely at the end of the season I don't think we can say for sure anymore he announced it but I don't think this is certain Logano has found some speed today and is is very mu uh, much in the mix here now as we have found an absolute wasp nest right here it's just congested as we go into turn one you've got these guys including myself on better tires some slower tires in front of us Chandler Smith is going backwards Kyle Larson briefly takes the lead but Byron back out in front just like that that 24 uh, I think is really the best car I think the 48 strong the 5 strong the 9 the 22 the 6 of Kozlowski but that 24 just has a little bit of an edge on everybody else here now as we find ourselves just right in the thick of this battle right here these uh slower cars in front of us quicker cars there uh SVG is actually really making great progress forward and I unfortunately get caught up on the outside and here's Kozlowski going through as well there's Smith going three wide on the outside of Josevar now who's definitely running worse than what that car is capable of today now he's got some decent speed but Kyle Larson now uh to the point as we roll through one and two we lost some stage points again in stage one to Kyle Larson who continues to try and extend the regular season lead sliding into the door of the 45 and my goodness Reddick is going for it balls to the wall type move around the outside and he is flying suddenly now as we're all over the back of the two of Gilliland we get to his inside but as well past Eric Jones in the process what a battle here outside of the top 20 the racing surprisingly has been quite dramatic so far uh, early on in Texas now past the halfway point in stage two and here we are running down Kozlowski and SVG again we'll make a three wide with these guys Austin kind of in the way we know he's looking for a ride for next season and Meyer shank racing they are shutting down uh that number zero six car will not be on the grid anymore following this season unfortunate for them as this is only their second full-time season uh in nascar so they will certainly be missed on the grid of course one of the back marker teams but uh they will definitely like i said be missed here on the grid after a very short uh tenure here in the cup series how about taylor gray we have run him down i mean all of these Joe Gibbs cars have damage on them. The 20, the 81. I don't think Smith has damage, but Joey Logano now to the point. Bell, he's been struggling. Taylor Gray, honestly, having a, a, a very solid race here in that 81 car. So shout out to him. Uh, he's already made a start this season, but yeah, he's making the most of it here now, running very solid uh, for just a, what, second race of his Cup Series career or so, uh, at least for Joe Gibbs car. He has made some starts last season when, if you guys remember, actually, we, we use up that 81, uh, but uh, Corey Hyman missed some races last season in the 47 uh, because he went over to replace a briefly injured Bubba Wallace in the 23 and of course Gray did some races in that 47 during that time pit stomps underway for all the guys that didn't pit earlier now the guys that have pitted they still can't make it to the end so we will have to pit as well just before the stage is over Logano I would expect to see him pitting now and, and sure enough there he goes there goes William Byron as well uh, Chandler Smith is going to have to pit Shane Van Gisbergen uh, and myself and Kozlowski Reddick we will all be able to wait, and you can see it's going to be Kozlowski that takes the lead over Tyler Reddick. We will have to pit soon, uh, but we are going to be able to stretch this a little bit further here now as we'll clear this 97, and as we exit turn four, now here comes Chandler Smith back into the fight. Actually, he might be on the same strategy as us, and I just didn't realize it now, as we have a bunch of cars exiting the pits here right in front of us as we battle for third and fourth with this number 18 quick tie, Toyota Camry. There's William Zawala. He's having a rough day for Legacy. Motor Club. That team just can never seem to find the speed that they need. As caution is going to fly as the 23 Bubble Wallace just behind. Engine blown up. It looks like smoke pouring out of the back. The caution is out and we're all going to pit and that's perfect for us because everybody that just pitted earlier has to take the wave around. Jesse Love gets a free pass. P7, Elliot, Bush, Blaney all in the top 10. Kozlowski P1, myself P2, a driver he's recruiting to his team is going to be on the front row with them. We're back racing with less than, well, about five laps ago to be here in stage number two. We lean on that six right off the bat in a turn one. Kozlowski's gone from wrecking to now racing for a stage win. But don't rule out either that 45 of Tyler Reddick. It's been over a season since he's won. He's had speed, but he's not had a lot of luck. As we head down this back straightaway, Kozlowski already clear. I know I've got no speed on the short run. It's about trying to hang on to stage points. Reddick is going to get through. Here comes Shane Van Gisbergen. It's 
been a, a bit of a bit of a letdown season for that 97 driver so far, but he goes through in the P3, and Bubba Wallace, who I thought was under the race originally, is still here and racing for position after we saw the smoke pouring out from that number 23. He's very much in the battle. He passes us, and here comes Trackhouse Kyle Busch. Won two races early in the season. He's had so much speed, but he's kind of had some inconsistencies, but he goes through. Here comes Smith. Here comes Kyle Larson trying to continue to extend that regular season point lead over myself. Reddick to the point, but Keselowski is back to his inside coming to two to go on the stage. Larson will get us through one and two and Keselowski edges out in front of that 45. We go down to P8 as we try to hang on to some stage points now coming to the final lap in stage number one. Keselowski clear over Rennick who goes all the way to the outside making a stage win pretty easy now for Brad Keselowski. Byron, one stage one, we're pushing hard on the exit of turn two, too hard, into the outside wall. This car sucks so hard, man, I've got nothing. You hear the radio? I mean, that was still driver error, but yeah, I mean, I've been very frustrated with the car. We're gonna give up stage points doing that. Brad Keselowski holds off Reddick, wins stage one, and unfortunately, Kyle Larson, or sorry, wins stage two. Kyle Larson, unfortunately, gains more stage points, uh, putting another five points on the lead. We, again, need to make some repairs, but this time we are making some adjustments, some tire pressure, uh, specifically wedge going down from 50.0 to 49 and a half. We are P12 to start the third and final stage as we get ready to go racing again. Now, it's been a really dramatic race here from Texas. How is this final stage going to shake out? We know the 9 strong. We know the 48 of Rajan Karuth is strong. The 24 as well. They all got shuffled backwards with the pitch strategy. Chaos and the caution. They've got some work to do, but they're all on the inside working their way forwards already. What can the 22 do? Logano, we know he's strong. We have seen him recently have strong pace. But something seems to happen throughout the race that shuffles him back and he can't seem to recover. Are we going to see that again today from Texas as we glide up the racetrack now? Here comes Chase Briscoe. We know we're going to fade early on in this stage because it's just that short run speed that's not there. 41 laps of racing. I would love in a perfect world that it would stay green to the end, but that's not going to happen. Kyle Busch now puts his Trackhouse 99 Honda Civic out in front over Keselowski, but it wouldn't last long. He would drop to second, Keselowski to third, because Tyler Reddick gets both of them into the lead of this race. Goes Reddick, crash out of turn four. It's a 48. Rajan Carruth, who's having a career day, it comes to an end. His horrific luck of the season continues, and we're going to get into it nearly. We get slowed down by the 17. Pile drives into the back of us, and that is going going to cause likely the bug where our car cannot launch on the restart. Nobody's pitting. Nobody can make it from here. Caruth's day comes to an end. It is impressive how bad his luck has been. He's had over now five DNFs and none of those being his fault. And, and sure enough, speaking of bad luck, it's not been our day. Our car does not launch on the restart. We have to pull over to the right and just get out of the way of everybody as we go down into turn number one. We're actually not going to lose too much. You can see some damage on the car now. Of course, it's not going to be performance impacting since it happened after the caution. We drop, however, down to about P20, P21 alongside Austin Sindrick. What a frustrating day here in Texas. Nothing has been going right for us. We've crashed. We've had that pit moment where we were trying to pit uh, and then of course overcorrected went back across the racetrack uh and then of course this has happened it's just nothing's going right but right now i really just feel bad for rajan karuth having a career day a car that was capable of running top five and another failure of a tire takes him out of the race William Byron has fought his way back to the point. He leads this race here from Texas on lap 85. He's going out to battle Brad Kozlowski and Tyler Reddick for sure, but don't rule out that nine of Chase Elliott. How far can we work our way forward before this race is over? Eric Jones there just in front of us. We get past the two of Todd Gilliland here now and finally can go back to work on this 34. His teammate of Zane Smith, by the way, has been having a great day, has a top 10 pace and uh, continues to impress. We know a Penske ride's open now. Zane Smith is someone I would keep my eye on here as we come through three out of turn four. Now reeling in uh, Ross Chastain, uh, as well as Taylor Gray, who continues to have a very solid day. Kozlowski back to the lead over Byron. Actually, those two continue to fight for the lead and fight hard. Now Byron looking for win one. Kozlowski looking for win two. We won earlier this season uh, back at Bristol. Uh, as we know, it's his final season of racing. 
No one else really knows. Uh, Kozlowski, I'm sure, is waiting probably till his home race in Michigan to announce his retirement here. Now as Chastain would pass us back on the exit of two, Kozlowski and Byron continue to fight. They swap back and forth. Lap 89 coming to 90. And you see Byron on the track map. Back to the lead of this race here from Texas as we're carving our way forward. Kozlowski and Byron still going at it. They're side by side for the lead. It's worth three wide, but it's two by two for the lead here in Texas. Kozlowski on the inside. Reddick and Bush just behind side by side. Here comes Chase Elliott. Who's going to lift? These two continue to fight hard. The six crashes. He collects the 24. The two leaders go crashing on the exit of the corner, collecting the nine, the 12, and the caution flies. Unbelievable. And, of course, our AI finds a way to get involved. My goodness. What a race in Texas as Tyler Reddick assumes a lead over Bush, Elliott, Byron, and Logano. Everybody pitted for four tires and feel. I can confirm. We still cannot make it to the end of this race. We're a bit short, and again, my goodness, our luck's been terrible. The car doesn't take off on the restart because of our AI hitting a car after the caution. This has been maybe the worst race of my career so far. This has just been nothing going right, and now it's Chandler Smith leading because we did have some drivers elect to do two tires and only uh, fuel uh, instead of four tires. So Smith is one of those drivers. Unfortunately, it didn't work out very well as uh, Tyler Reddick blew his doors off in a corner, uh, just a corner after we just saw. Uh, and Bubba Wallace is trying to work his way forward up there, uh, but he is going backwards now. We are currently running P19. Reddick is out in front. Nobody can make it to the end. We're all short by uh, really just a handful of laps. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out if it stays he's green but this race it feels more and more chaotic as time goes on what a dramatic moment Kozlowski crashing with Byron and by the way Kozlowski is still in this race he's in front of me the six you can just see his back bumper up there he's running about 12th or so uh, so Kozlowski is still in the mix for this win after crashing twice in this race all on his own uh, as uh, the 24 however uh, is trying to work his way forward uh, in a bit of a worse position than the six of Kozlowski as we are now going to pass this 81 not gonna happen there he's not making it easy he would continue this fight as Reddick continues to lead as we are approach lap 100 less than 20 laps to go and a race of non-stop chaos and here comes Chase Elliott who was involved in that accident working his way back forward as well in that number nine Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet he's gonna get us on the exit of turn two he's just simply too fast for me to even bother putting up a fight to him so he breezes past on the inside and he continues to carve his way forward he's already passed multiple cars uh as he passed the 98 to the 97 the one as well will pass the 98 as well move up into p13 uh with 15 laps to go lap 106 approaching 10 to go uh once the 45 comes around one more time reddick continues to lead he's hoping maybe it stays green but eight laps of field we're getting ready for some pit stops legato loses it into turn one collects larson cautions out again and this is really gonna make things interesting i swear to god our AI has hit the 22. Our AI has found a way to hit every single crash as Reddick leads. Keselowski drove up to second by the time the caution came out. As I was trying to figure out what to do, we only need a couple of laps of feel, and I actually uh, selected four tires and feel, and I was trying to change that and, and watch this because this is embarrassing. So I'm trying to quickly change to just half a can of feel on right sides, and I accidentally select to stay out on the racetrack. If things... Couldn't get any worse. Well, we just proved it could. I just made a horrific decision. We stay out, not intentionally, but now we, I don't even know what the situation is, as we're gonna ask James Small. Okay, so no one took tires. You have the same rubber as everyone else, but we're a lap short. Try to save here. You hear the command from James Small, no one took tires, that's our one advantage. We know we have good pace when the tires wear, so hold on. What can we do? But we're one lap short on feel. That's the main problem now, as we've got a whole new set of drama uh, revolving all around myself here now as we roll through three. And you can see, you could tell immediately, yeah, they do not have four fresh tires. So uh, we were making the right call to cancel the four tires and go back to no tires or two tires. But I may end up making the wrong call by staying out by accident <laughs> trying to do that. So 
Um, yeah, we probably screwed ourselves. The question is, can we save a lap of field here in six laps? It's going to be no easy feat. Blaney to the inside as we exit two down the spank stretch into turn three. Blaney will take the lead. Here comes Kislowski. Elliott just behind. Where's Reddick? We expected him to be out front. Not the case. And now Kislowski is going to go through. We know he's probably the quickest of these guys, but Elliott's quick too. What can Blaney do looking for his second win on the season? Not going to be enough because Kislowski is going to get him through three and four. Four. Four laps of feel coming to what? Five laps to go. We need to save one lap somehow. Bellini drops the third. We're still one lap short. I don't think we've got anything at this point. What's the situation, James? We're not going to make it. Just push hard until it runs out. This has been probably the worst race of my career. Three laps to go. Where is the fuel light going to come on? Because that will signal you got about two laps of fuel from that point. Waiting. There it is. Fuel light on. So we're definitely, yeah, we're, we're not going to make it. Not even going to be close. We're told to push until it runs out. And Chase Elliott now to the inside of Keselowski looking for his second win on the year. We pass Bellini announcing, of course, he's leaving Penske at the season's end. He's having another good run here in Texas. But down the spank straight away with two to go. Where are we going to run out? That's the question now. The tire light on. The fuel light on. Elliott's leading the way at a four. Coming to the final lap. We're up to third. We have the pace to compete on the worn tires. But it's not going to matter as we cross the stripe. One lap to go into turn number one. There it goes. We're running out of fuel into turn number one. Chase Elliott runs away. Tyler Reddick going to go through into third. And bring Blaney and Kyle Busch with them into fourth and fifth. And it's going to be who even knows at this point. We pull over and get out of the way. It's been a disaster. Smith goes through, Larson 7th, Zane Smith and P8, what a drive for them as Chase Elliott leads out of 4 down the front straightaway, Elliott wins here in Texas, his second win over Keselowski, Reddick, Bush and Blaney and for us, we just have to limp it home out of field for P26, what a disastrous day from Texas, a race full of chaos. Chase Elliott gets to burn it down and celebrate his second win on the season as Larson, I mean, did nothing but score, outscore us all day long uh, as he ends up top 10. You'll see the finishing order on your screen. Zane Smith with an incredible drive. SVG, Ross Chastain putting all track house cars in the top 10. Again, uh, Byron, who probably had the car to win, ends up P11 trying to recover late in that race. Uh, outside of the top 20, of course, us in P26, Harrison Burton, P27, Haley with a rough day in 29th, DNF, so Logano, that's huge for his playoff chances. Uh, Carruth and Gregson, Logano continues to have speed recently, but has no luck to go with it. In the regular season standings, we'll take a look at that in a second. Actually, the playoff grid uh, currently right now, Shane Van Gisbergen, 12 points above Bubba Wallace following Texas, and then Gilliland, uh, Jones, Logano, Josefar, all the next guys out. In in the regular season standings, Larson has now increased to nearly 50 points above myself after we were leading the regular season uh, standings just a few races ago, and now we're under attack from both Elliott and Bellini. Next episode is the start of the Bush Light Tournament, uh, where everyone goes head-to-head -head, uh, for a $3 million prize. That's going to be fun, a new incentive to race for starting in Kansas. I'll see you guys in that next episode. Thank you for watching as we look to bounce back next round. Have a great day.